Bismillah salatu wassalamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Camila and today I'll be talking to you about storage devices and media. Storage devices are used to store or to back up data. So what situations would we actually need to back up our data? Well, even right now, just in case we lose it or if it is corrupted by hackers. And lastly, if we need to transport data, it would be way easier to use a separate medium rather than carrying our entire computer set up to whatever location it needs to be transferred to. Here's the exact definition of backing up. To copy files or data from one medium to another in case there is an issue with the original secondary storage device. I want you to remember the word secondary storage device because we're going to talk about that later. Here is the measurement of data size, as you could say. It starts with bytes, which is the smallest, and a thousand bytes would be one kilobyte. A thousand kilobytes, one megabyte. One thousand megabytes, one gigabyte. And a thousand gigabytes, one terabyte. A terabyte is so big that ordinary people like us wouldn't even be able to consume all of it. Here are some um, storage devices. We start off with a floppy disk at the smallest, then a CD-ROM, a DVD-ROM, Blu-ray, hard drive, and lastly a magnetic tape all the way up at 185 terabytes. Let's talk about main memory. This is also known as internal or primary memory and it includes stuff like random access memory, also known as RAM, and read-only memory, also known as RAM. RAM is stuff that is volatile. It has um, applications that are currently running in the computer. So of course, when you turn off the computer, you will no longer need those applications. And so the data in RAM will be lost. That is what volatile means. ROM um, start, stores startup instructions and it is non-volatile. So if you turn off the computer, it will not be lost. Main memory stores data while it is also being processed by the CPU. Backing storage. This is also known as secondary storage. So a secondary storage device or a backing storage device would be a hard drive and it is part of the computer. So back in our definition, we are transporting files just in case there is something wrong with the device that is already in the computer. This is, of course, non-volatile because it stores data for a very long time and it will store stuff like our applications, our operating system, in my case, Windows, and other random files. Optical media. Optical media would be stuff like CDs, DVDs, and Blu-ray. CD-ROMs are read-only and that means they can be accessed but not changed, just like ROM, hence why it is called read-only memory. It usually stores smaller stuff like music, audios, um, small applications, and device drivers. DVD is also read-only. It cannot be altered, but it will store stuff that are slightly bigger, like movies, computer games, and other applications. Blu-ray. Blu-ray is called Blu-ray because unlike um, CDs and DVDs, which use a red laser, Blu-ray uses a blue one and it's very big compared to a DVD, so it will store stuff like HD movies, which take up more space, and bigger softwares or games or just other applications. Magnetic storage devices. We start off with fixed internal hard drive. This is the main backing storage that is used, and it is unlikely to break because it is fixed in place inside your computer, so it will be hard to break unless you somehow manage to smash your entire computer. It has a quick data transfer rate, and it has moving parts compared to solid state drives, which again, I would like for you to remember that keyword. Shutting it down incorrectly could cause a malfunction. This is why when we turn off our computer, we have to click shut down instead of simply turning off the plug. Portable hard drive. This connects to the computer usually using a USB port, and it will store personal backup data. In my case, I put pictures in my heart drive. It is portable, which means you can easily unplug it and then transfer it to another computer. This is the example I was using in the beginning. 
if I want to transport my pictures from this computer to my sister's home, which is 20 minutes away, I would rather use a portable hard drive. It is prone to errors compared to a fixed hard drive. Now this is because of course it is not attached to the computer. It has to be plugged in. So there's a lot of things that could go wrong with that. And of course, as well, since you're carrying it around, you may drop it a couple times and it could be damaged. It does also have to be correctly ejected from your computer before it can be turned off or before you can just simply unplug it because if not, it will be damaged. We have magnetic tapes. Large organizations will use this because, as we mentioned earlier, it has such big um, storage capacity. Accessing data sometimes can be a little bit slow, and it is for long-term use. I'll explain why it can be slow in a second, but here we have solid-state. Solid-state devices, right? This is electric, electronic circuits, so it doesn't have a moving part, unlike the previous one. It stores data using something called flash memory, and it uses direct access. What is direct access? Well, you remember how I said earlier magnetic tapes take a very long time when you are trying to access your data? That is because it checks the vid video or the data sequentially. So it goes in order before the record is found. Whereas with direct access, it goes directly or straight to where the data is located. Okay, now I have a question for you to put this into perspective in the real world. Would you buy a computer that has an SSD, a solid state drive, or one where you can store data in the cloud? What is the cloud, you may ask? It's basically like all of the devices we've, got, we've mentioned, except that it is virtual and it is online. So you need to connect to the internet and sometimes even pay a fee to store your data. Can you think of any reasons? Okay, here, I'll help you out. Pros and cons. With an SSD, it is stored within the computer, so you won't lose it. It is also physical and it is always available. So if you just see it and you can pass it to somebody else, so it's, it's always around and it's always there. It's a one-time payment because with the cloud, you may have to pay sort of like a monthly payment or sometimes if you want to upgrade your storage, then you'll have to pay. And it will not need internet, which usually will be faster because if you have bad internet, um, network speed, then it might take a long time, but SSDs do not require internet, whereas the cloud does. It can be accessed on many devices without transfer. Now, this is important because although an SSD is always physical, you do not, you do need to actually pick up your SSD and go to wherever else. Whereas with cloud, somebody else can simply log in and would immediately be able to access your data. SSDs may be lost or damaged because, again, they are physical, so it is easier to drop it or lose it. And backups on the cloud are automatic because it's an online thing. And cloud, if you ever need to upsize or get more data storage capacity, then it does not have a fixed size. So you can just upgrade your plan and you will get more um, storage capacity, unlike an SSD where it comes in one size. That is all for me and I hope you have a wonderful day. Assalamu alaikum.